Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 5 talking about the ML functional performance matrices and we'll be stepping into the next segment of this chapter which is 5.2 additional ML functions functional performance matrices for classification, regression and clustering. So let's get going and understand more about it. Of course, in our previous tutorial, we tried understanding few of the major performance matrices which are very, very important and that included the confusion matrix and few other things like accuracy, precision, recall, as well as the F1 score. Now we'll be topping up more further that what exactly happens when it comes to supervised and unsupervised ML models and how exactly the calculations can be measured with help of these matrices. So the additional ML functional performance matrices are being referred here with the um, the other matrices which we really make use of for a specific type of ML models. So there are numerous matrices basically for different types of ML problems uh, in addition to what we have already discussed. Some of the most commonly used matrices are described in this section. Number one is supervised classification matrix. Now supervised learning is more of like a systematic approach. Now the receiver operating characteristics, which is referred to as ROC curve, is a graphical plot that illustrates the ability of binary classifier as its discrimination threshold is varied. Now the method was originally developed for military radars, uh, which is why it is named as so. Like receiver operating characteristics. The ROC curve is plotted with true positive rate, which is TPR, also known as recall, which we covered in our previous tutorial, against the false positive rate, which is FPR, measured as FP divided by the sum of TN, which is true negative plus false positive. Now with TPR on Y axis and FPR on the X axis, you measure how the plotting goes with different executions and different iterations. So it will be just represented with a 2D uh, graphical representation where you compare the TPR and FPR and see how exactly it illustrates the classifier in terms of its discrimination thresholds. The area under the curve, which is of course below the curve or you know inside part of it, um, is the area under ROC curve. It represents the degree of separability of a classifier showing how well the model distinguishes between the classes. With a higher AOC, which is area under the curve, the model's predictions are better. So right here on the right hand side, you have a quick image to get a glimpse of it that what exactly does it really look like. Same way when we talk about the supervised regression matrix, now these are also a part of the classifier there. So for supervised regression models, the matrix represents how well the regression line fits the actual data points. Now, mean square error, which is MSE, which is referred to as the average of square differences between the actual value and the predicted value. The value of MSE is always positive and a value closer to zero suggests a better regression model. By squaring the difference, it ensures positive and negative errors do not cancel each other out. So more importantly, this will give you the uh, kind of like the closeness with respect to the predicted versus actual, and it will help you understand what is the, you know, better regression models. And again, you need to carry on with all the informations what we have covering in from the chapter one. If you say at this point of time, hey, what is regression? I think I would recommend you to go back to the previous tutorials and recall those information and be in line, in tune with what we are talking about so that the other few information which is going to come in future as well will make more sense. Also R squared, which is also known as coefficient of determination, is a measure of how well the regression model fits the dependent variable. So pretty much important is like we are not talking about how do you calculate this you are going to give a problem and then you need to solve it or something these are more from the information point of view that you need to know what does matrix talk about and how does it address the measurements of the performance of an ml model so you just need to be aware of that what these matrices are and how are they calculated 
All right, in the same segment, of course, we have one more and we are talking about the unsupervised cluster matrix. Now, clustering matrices, uh, of course, they come from the unsupervised learning. Now, for unsupervised clustering, there are several matrices that represent the distance between the various clusters and the closeness of the data points within a given cluster. Now, cluster, as simple as possible to understand, is uh, more of like grouping, gathering together. So clusters may have like, you know, uh, kind of like data points very close to each other, sometime away from each other. So you need to understand what's the closeness between these data points uh, when we talk about a particular cluster. So the measurement units or matrices are intra-cluster matrix measure, the similarity of data points within a cluster. Second is inter-cluster matrices, which is measured as the similarity of data points in different clusters. So of course, intra is within a cluster and inter is between clusters, right? So between two things. Intra is within the same thing, how exactly it's been distributed. And the third one is the Silhouette Coefficient, also known as Silhouette Score, is a measure between minus one to plus one based on the average intercluster and intra-clusters distance. A score of plus one means the cluster are well separated, a score of zero implies random clustering, and score of minus one, which is negative, means the cluster are wrongly assigned. So a negative value as close as you are to the negative, it represents that they are wrongly clustered, and the zero is more of like random clustered, and positive is more of like well separated. So the end goal here at this point of time should be that you should receive as much close as possible to the positive number, right? The range varies from negative to positive one, but of course has three values in it, minus one, zero, and positive one. So if things are, you know, close to plus one, the positive side, you are better. But if it is on the negative side, you need to do something better. <laughs> anyway, so that's all from this particular short tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always here to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.